In this video, we're gonna learn how to write a formula for a number pattern. All right, coming up. So let's say Jackson, he's making shapes out of matchsticks. He's made one, two, three, four, five different shapes, but he wants to find out how many matchsticks he needs for the 50th shape. He's got two options. He can either carry on making the shapes until he gets to the 50th shape, or write a formula so that he can figure out how many matchsticks he needs. Now that would be pretty neat, because it will save him a lot of time having to make all the shapes. So what we're gonna do, step one, we're gonna draw a table of values. And in this case, we're gonna draw um, the shape number versus the number of matchsticks. So that's my table. So you can see for the first shape, I've counted three matchsticks. I'm gonna write here in my table three. And then for the second shape, I can write five. And then for the third shape, I've got seven. For the fourth shape, I've got nine. For the fifth shape, I've got 11. Now step two, what I'm gonna do is I need to find the consecutive difference between terms. So consecutive means following one after the other continuously. So shape one, shape two, shape three, shape four, shape five. So we're gonna find the consecutive difference. Between three and five, that's plus two. Between five and seven, it's plus two. Between seven and nine, you're adding two. And then from nine to 11, you're adding two again. So our consecutive difference between terms is plus two. Now, we're gonna to try to write a formula for the number sequence. Now for the nth term, Instead of adding two each time, for example, for the fourth term, we do the first term plus two, plus two, plus two. So we're always doing this multiple of two. Instead of adding the twos to multiply by two, so we can take the nth term, in this case, the fifth term or the fourth term or the third term, and multiply it by two. So let's check if this actually works. If I take the first term and I multiply it by two, I get two. Now that's a problem because my answer isn't two. If I continue and I check the second term, so two times two gives me four, but I don't want four. And then three times two gives me six, and again, I don't want six, but I want seven. Step three B, what we need to do is we actually need to make an adjustment to our formula. And think about what the adjustment is. Yeah, you guessed it, it's, it's plus one. So, let's check. Step four, we're gonna verify our formula. We're gonna test then, n, times two plus one with that adjustment. The first term times two plus one gives us three. Perfect, that's what we need. The second term times two plus one gives us five, exactly what we need. The third term times two plus one gives us seven, and that's exactly what we need. So now let's try to work out um, for Jackson how many matchsticks he needs for the 50th term. Let's use the formula to find the 50th shape. This time we're gonna substitute 50 because we're looking for the 50th shape. So 50 times two plus one is 100 plus one, and hey presto, we get 101 matchsticks. Jackson needs 101 matchsticks uh, to make the 50th shape. Now, bear in mind, this isn't always the case for every sequence, okay? This always changes. What? So stick around, let's do another question. So Jackson's sister wants to find out how many matchsticks is she, is she gonna need for any number of shapes, okay? For the, so for the 50th shape or the 100th shape. So Sarah wants to find out how many matchsticks are needed for the nth term. So step one, again, we start off with making a table of values. The first shape, I've actually got one matchstick. For the second shape, I have four matchsticks. You can count them, one, two, three, four. And then seven matchsticks for the fourth shape, 10 matchsticks. And I'll just count those really quickly. Yeah, 10 matchsticks. Step two, find the consecutive difference. Now in this case, I've got a consecutive difference of plus three. So I'm gonna to try to write a formula. So that's N times three. So let's check and see if it actually works. And if we need to, we'll make an adjustment. So one times three gives me three. Um, I don't want three, I want one. Two times three gives me six. What I need is four. And then three times three, the third shape, gives me nine. But I don't want nine, I want seven. 
And then 4 times 3 gives me 12, but I don't want 12, I want 10. So we definitely need an adjustment. Can you guess what adjustment is? Yeah, you guessed it, it's minus 2. So 3 minus 2 gives me 1, and that's correct. 6 minus 2 gives me 4, again that's correct. 9 minus 2 gives me 7, perfect. And you guessed it, 12 minus 2 gives me 10. So the nth term then, my formula, is going to be n times 3 minus 2. So what I want to do, I just want to verify that in step 4, and I'm going to try to find the fifth term. 5 times 3 minus 2, so for the fifth term gives me 13, and I can write it up here in my table. Now, but I need to check whether that's right, so I'm going to draw the fifth term, and I'm going to count the, the matchsticks, and I've got, I've got 13, so that's absolutely correct, perfect, spot on. Let's quickly recap. Step one, make your table of values. Step two, find the consecutive difference. Then write a formula. You start off by saying n multiplied by three because that's our consecutive difference. And then you check to see if that works. Clearly it doesn't work. So you need to make an adjustment. After making that adjustment, we find out that our nth term formula is n times three minus two for this sequence, for this number sequence. Step four, make sure you verify your formula. In this case, I've done the fifth term. You could do the sixth or the seventh. It doesn't really make a difference. I drew the shape to confirm that it's correct, and I'm done. Hey, so thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Drop a like and watch part two where I run through a test question.